Are you looking for the perfect summertime recipe? I think I've got it right here for you. This is my summer crab carbonara. If you love bucatini noodles, if you love carbonara technique, and if you love really rich, yummy crab, this is the perfect recipe for you and I'm gonna show you right now. Let's get cooking. So we have all our items here, what we call our mise en place. Having this ready really helps this recipe go forward quite nicely and quite efficiently. So I have everything I need, everything in this place. We have our capers that can come salted or brined, um, depending on where and, and how you buy them. Crab meat is very interesting to where there's all sorts of kinds. As long as it's been picked through, there's no bones, there's no filaments. Whatever you have that tastes delicious, use that and whatever you trust. Next we have our Pecorino Romano. It is salty, briny, rich, all the flavors that you want that really bring this dish um, to a traditional point and traditional peak. Bucatini is just, a, just my favorite noodle out of all pasta. It is the perfect length, it's the perfect thickness. The chew is just right. It, it's easier to cook. Um, it has a hole that runs through the middle. Bucatini just has that texture and that personality, if you will, that lends itself to really any sauce and any preparation. These are not magic eggs. These are just normal store-bought eggs that we're going to remove the yolk from and separate. The yolks add such a silkiness and richness and almost creaminess to the dish, as essentially this is, we're making somewhat of a custard. And when you add cheese, you add richness, you add salt, um, it really helps it come together. So I'm just gonna show you a little technique on how I crack my eggs. Take two eggs and when you bang them together, only one ever breaks. The other one never, ever, ever, ever breaks. So um, you end up able to use that hand to crack open the rest of the egg and we just add it to our dish. And when you put your hand in, you just close your hand and let it go. You don't want to get the yolk, you just want to get all of the liquid and egg white that's below it. Next we have our garlic. Uh, you know, when you have garlic and you buy it from the store or a fresh farm stand, regardless of who you buy it from, you really want to make sure that when you do find it, it's worth it to just break one open as you don't want to get home and it's not quite as fresh as you thought. What you're looking for is this beautifully dried, beautifully fragrant garlic. Next we have our pepper. I make a little pepper mix for myself at home. I use actually pink peppercorns, which are fruity, as well as black peppercorns. Uh, but you're welcome to be creative with that and use white, green, whatever you like. The oils from peppercorns are quite intense, but when balanced with the right kind of sauce and the right acidity, it actually goes down quite well. Next we have chives. These chives are just, just grown in my backyard. If you don't have access to chives, as it is sometimes a little hard to find in the supermarket in the quantity that you need, I actually end up just using uh, scallions. And you can slice them up the same way, nice and fine, and they work in incredibly well. I have two of these. We use one for juice and one for zest. Lemons do incredible things for really rich dishes, and um, I can't wait to show you exactly how to do it. We have our entire setup here. All right, I have my uh, pasta water boiling. This is a little fresher pasta than you would find in the store. This will probably take about three minutes to cook. Any pasta you buy from the store will probably take about six to eight minutes. Now the thing about pasta, um, especially fresh or, or dried or store-bought, you want to make sure you move it pretty much right away. It can tend to just kind of stick uh, as it is cooking. So if you make sure you kind of create some separation between the pasta, you only have to really stir it once or twice in the beginning just to make sure that it is not getting stuck together as you don't want to end up with a big pasta cake at the end. Pasta is done, um, I'm gonna pull it out. Just a little bit of olive oil, just like that. The steam is great. With this technique, you can now put this in the fridge. You can save it till tomorrow, you can save it for another day. But what this does is it, it takes away from the, from the, you know, trying to time and case making a sauce with blanching pasta. And you really don't want to have to do both at the same time. And now I can start to cook my sauce. How we start that in this Lake say signature skillet is we always start with just cold oil. The bottom of the skillet is not turned on with any heat. We want to enjoy this process. We want to enjoy and really smell and watch closely about how the garlic cooks and how it interacts with the oil. And then I'm going to now turn on high heat. So we just really want to watch closely on this on this garlic that you don't brown too much, but also not being afraid to letting it just have a little bit of its raw natural pieces in there. And there's, there's something lovely about that. And, but also being able to enjoy and, and, and smell that while you're cooking is just, just an incredible, uh, incredible experience. So now I'm gonna add it in my capers. And the other thing about the capers is the way they fry up, they, they, they transform when they're in the pan and they cook with garlic. 
Uh, they, they're not just some things that are in a can and sitting there looking at you strangely on the shelf. Like they, they actually transform and kind of blend into the sauce. Now you should see the activity of the oil really strong in the pan right now. The smell should be incredibly strong. I'm going to grab a ladle and I'm just going to add my pasta water to the pan in order to create the beginning of my sauce. It starts to get really active with the water. The, the pan is very, very hot. Um, the garlic and the capers are perfectly toasted. I'm going to add a bit of my pepper right now, okay? Just to start off, I'm gonna add a little bit more later, but this gives some really gloomy of the, of the peppercorn. And when it's all up to a full boil, now we can add our pasta, right? Our blanched pasta. Now the, the pepper and the capers and the uh, garlic are all starting to wrap around this noodle, get inside of the noodle, because again, the bugatini has a hole that runs through. So everything's coming together, the garlic's cooking and looking toasted. The color of the capers are really matching well with the beautiful newest color, cayenne from, from Lake Mercier. It's just absolutely harmonious in both look and, and smell. And now I'm just going to get my eggs ready and just give them a little beat. Not too much, just a little bit just to break them up. They break up pretty easily. And now what I'm gonna do is gonna add this to this pan. But before you do, you have to make sure you turn off the heat. That will obviously allow for you not to make scrambled eggs, um, but also, to be able to enjoy and, and see the process of how the eggs just coat over and glaze over the noodles. Lovely, okay, give it a little shimmy. And now I'm just going to add in the egg. And while I'm adding the egg, I'm just giving it a little toss. Okay, there we go. Grab your um, water spoon. Okay, just like that. Give it a little toss here, a little toss. So when you add in the cheese, same thing as this, you don't want to turn back on the heat. You don't want to add any more heat application to this. Now, next I'm going to add in my very delicate crab. It, it's funny that, you know, I said delicate because crab is actually the opposite of delicate. When you add it in, it never overcooks. No matter how much you break it down, it always just stays up. It always stays juicy and plump. Good amount of chives, okay? But I mentioned about adding more pepper before, okay? Let's add that in. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest. Toss it. Okay, lovely, that's how you want it to look. All right, so now let's bring it over to go in and plate. Okay, lovely, awesome. So I'm just gonna plate it. And what you wanna do when you plate, you just wanna get in there, get as much as you can, take your time. So pasta should always have this jiggle to it when you can kinda take the pan, it should kinda just settle on itself. That's how you know it's at the right uh, texture and right uh, amount of liquid. I always, for every single pasta that I ever make, I always finish it with a little bit more olive oil, okay? Both for flavor and for texture, and I finish with a little more pepperino romano. The flavor is yummy, the crab is bright, the lemon is bright, the pasta is perfectly al dente. The pecorino sharpness really cuts through all the pasta. When you saute the capers with the garlic and in the oil, they gain this new personality. They become almost caramelized. So the reason why I picked carbonara is because it is so customizable. I was trying to you know, cook for uh, some of my family who could not eat pork, and I thought crab was just the perfect resemblance of that dish that you want to give to someone that shows a boldness, but also some restraint and all the things that I love to show off when I'm cooking for people. And I can't wait for you to try it in your home.